So good afternoon, everybody. You're very welcome to this webinar, uh, very brief webinar introduction to the MA Refugee Integration. Uh, my name is Veronica Crosby and I'm the chairperson of MARI. And I'd also like to introduce Stephen Long, who is a graduate from our program, who is due to celebrate his graduation in DCU um, this Saturday. So we're very excited about that. Uh, it's our first live graduation um, since the program started because COVID had kicked in. So um, without further ado, I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, share with you some uh, slides. So this first image is one that I'm sure you're all very familiar with. It's of people who are crossing the border from Ukraine into Poland um, due to the um, incursions, the war in Ukraine. And um, Ireland, like elsewhere, is had, has had to scramble to cope with um, the arrival of people. So, for example, we've been told that up to the end of March, we can expect to have received 20,000 refugees from the war. And by the end of April, that this will have doubled to 40,000. And um, if we look at the global picture, according to the UNHCR figures, which haven't been updated, in fact, since February, um, they say that there are um, 82.4 million people who have been forcibly displaced. And when we look at migration, we can look at people migrating for many different kinds of reasons, some because uh, they want to seek new opportunities elsewhere, some forced to leave, maybe because of sexual persecution. Others, as in the case of Ukraine, their cities, their livelihoods are being bombed into oblivion. So they are forced to leave. And so um, in the Irish context, we can see um, so many different organizations from the government through NGOs to um, institutions like DCU, other universities, schools, um, civil society groups, all working really hard at the moment to see how best can we welcome, accommodate, integrate refugees into our midst. So, for example, yesterday um, in DCU, we co-hosted a webinar for schools of sanctuary in Ireland, and there were over 500 schools logged into the webinar looking for um, strategies, resources, um, guidelines on how best to receive, make people feel welcome. And um, DCU is a university of sanctuary. It was the first university to be given this um, uh, this accreditation in 2016. And what it means is that we um, have pledged to be a, an institution that is open and welcoming to people who have been forced to leave their homelands, be they people seeking asylum, be they pro program refugees, etc. Um, so if we look, um, so for example, at the moment in the school where I'm based, the School of Applied Language and Intercultural Studies, we are currently working behind the scenes to set up um, provisional language classes, um, community interpreting events, uh, buddy systems, um, you know, information for the host community, ways to see how we might integrate people. and. Um, Students who are currently studying on the master's program, you know, they have been obviously alerted to all of this. Some of them are already helping in this area. And so a master's like the MA Refugee Integration, which we call MARI for short, um, is a program which can equip you if you're interested in entering into this arena. Um, so I'm going to just give you a very brief overview of the kind of content should you wish to study the, on the master's programme. Um, we have a number of core modules that everybody must take in addition to optional modules. So in the first semester, you, uh, you would have three core modules. The first is the refugee journey, which I've been lecturing on. It's one where we 
understand more about um, people who are on the move and um, the, you know, the trauma, per, for example, that they may um, encounter or experience while they're on the move, um, their arrival in the host community, um, the integration processes set up uh, to support them, how the host community responds to that. And my colleague Agnes Mayo lectures in that area, um, looking at forced migration and the host society response. We also look at education in forced migration contexts. Here we, we can see um, a, a classroom in a refugee camp um, in, the, in that image. Um, in semester two, looking at gender, sexuality and migration, another colleague, um, Jean-Philippe Ambert, he lectures that. Um, we have year-long core modules. So, for example, research methods. Um, when you are engaging in research in this area, you know, how do you construct a coherent research project plan? How do you write a literature review? Um, the difference between quantitative and qualitative research. Um, so all the tools for engaging in research in the area and very importantly, the ethics of research in this area with people who are um, designated vulnerable, although we can contest that term vulnerable as well, uh, because many people who are deemed to be vulnerable are also extremely um, resilient. At the end of the um, second semester, you would um, engage in a dissertation. So you have four months to, to complete that and submit that in September. So if we look at the content, um, I've shown you the core <coughs> module. Now we can see some optional modules. You've got translation in crisis, working with refugees and international protection applicants. This is a module um, that Stephen was introduced this year. It wasn't available to you last year because of COVID. Um, and it's one to uh, where students work, they, they spend some time doing an internship with an NGO or a body. Um, we have some placed with the Irish Refugee Council, with UNHCR, with Spirasi, etc. And they're all gaining valuable experience as well as the contacts for working uh, potentially in the future in that area. But we also partner with our School of Law and Government. They offer other modules that can extend the vision and the, the remit of our program. So, for example, we've got governance of migration in Europe, the politics of the UN, environmental change and world politics, international development practice politics of Middle East and North Africa, the politics and development in sub-Saharan Africa, race, minorities and indigenous in international law. So this is a flavour of the kinds of modules that you can choose from in the second semester. And um, going back to the first um, set of uh, modules, these are ones where those who are um, to, uh, registered for the Masters in Refugee Integration you all study those together as a group. In semester, things open up more and um, you will then engage with students from other programs studying these um, modules. We are also offering something new in this coming year, the option to study um, language. Uh, French and Spanish are where we're starting with, and um, we would expect you to have already a level, an intermediate level, if you wish to choose them. They're called year-long options because you do um, a module in semester one, which is five credit, and another module in semester two um, of the same language. You can't, once you start on that track, you must continue. So the assessment um, that you could expect, it's um, continuous assessment, and which means that you might be um, asked to perform a task in, in the middle of your studies, mid-semester, and then there's also end of semester and just after semester, other forms of assessment. So, for example, you may be asked to give a peer presentation. There are case studies. You can do the more traditional academic essay, reflective reports, we've got e-portfolios, there's a whole range of different continuous assessment types. And then 
Um, at the end of the second semester, one of the modules, um, the research methods, you were asked to formulate a research plan for engaging in dissertation research. And that, as I said, is what would occupy you over the summer months, handing it in then at the beginning of September. And uh, you can exit after semester one and two with 60 credits. And you may say, mm, maybe the dissertation is not for me. And you can exit them with a graduate diploma in um, uh, refugee integration. Or you may wish to go for the full um, master's level degree. And, um, and you do that by undertaking the dissertation. So if we look at the logistics, the delivery mode, um, it's in class lectures and seminars uh, that is on the Glasnevin campus in DCU. Um, we also have a um, blended delivery mode where some lectures will be recorded. They're made available to you in advance and then you meet to workshop ideas in seminar mode. Um, some modules are offered fully online and we've seen with COVID, we've all had to up skill very quickly for that. But we've taken the decision to uh, keep in um, on campus mode delivery rather than going blended or fully online um, because we see the value in people meeting as a group, as a cohort. That may change again in the future, but for this coming year, uh, where we, we've chosen the in-class, um, in-person sessions. Um, we use a virtual learning environment, uh, which is a virtual classroom called Loop. And uh, the image on the right is one from one of the course pages, the module that I teach, the refugee journey. And um, you can see there are a number of tiles here. Each tile represents um, a course component. The timetable generally for all the core modules, um, and I, we know that many of you are quite busy, you have um, part time or full time jobs and you wish to do this master's in addition. Now, it is a full time program. It is a full time module rather than a part time delivery mode. Um, but we do try and accommodate people by um, scheduling our core modules after 4 p.m. Um, but we cannot uh, guarantee that all the optional modules will be after 4 p.m. The same goes for the language options. But we have tailored it in such a way that you could choose modules um, that are all after 4 p.m. So it might restrict you in your choices, but that is possible. So just looking at career opportunities, um, so there are a number of areas you could choose to work in. You could go internationally working with the UNHCR, with the IOM, UNICEF, Red Cross. They have local offices in Ireland, but there's also career opportunities to work in their organizations in many different countries. Um, there's the NGO sector, for example, some students um, since they graduated have uh, got work with the Irish Refugee Council. One um, graduate, he's looking at the community sponsorship program. He's looking after that area. Uh, another colleague is working with the Migrant Rights Council of Ireland, and um, she's now looking at people who were um, who came in uh, with known as paperless or undocumented, um, or they might have arrived with a visa and become uh, undocumented. Um, and there, the government now has decreed that they there's an amnesty and they are able to regularize their position. So she's now working in that area, giving advice. Some may prefer to stay in academia and continue the studies by pursuing a PhD course. Um, so the requirements to study the, on the programme, you have uh, the general entry requirements. You need to have a minimum of a, a H22 or above um, from a recognised Irish or UK honours undergraduate degree. But we also accept students with appropriate combinations of professional qualifications and experience. 
Um, so this can include discipline specific knowledge and know how some transferable skills or basic research competency. So essentially, we in, in cases like that, we would interview individuals to see their, um, you know, to what extent they would be able to study on the programme. Uh, excuse me, for international candidates where a language might be an issue, we have requirements that you have to have a minimum of 6.5 in IELTS, which is an internationally recognised language proficiency uh, core, uh, certification <coughs> or equivalent. And on our DCU website, you'll see uh, this is just a screenshot from our DCU website where you will see them. And there's the fees for EU status at 7 1,400 non-EU, it's 15,000. I, I mentioned earlier that we are um, a university of sanctuary, so we also offer sanctuary scholarship program. Um, so there is a scholarship available in the humanities. So if any of you uh, might meet that requirement, you might be eligible for uh, receiving a sanctuary scholarship. So that's, um, I'm going to uh, hand over to Stephen now, uh, who's very kindly agreed to tune in from Belfast. Um, Stephen did the programme last year when it was fully online. So Stephen, I'll thank you very much for agreeing to participate. And um, if you would say a few words about your experience of the programme. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. To allow you to speak, yeah. Thank, thank you for the for the invite, Veronica. Can can you hear me? Okay, perfectly. Yes. Perfectly. Okay. Um, my name is Stephen Long, and I am the uh, refugee resettlement coordinator for uh, Health and Social Care in Northern Ireland. Um, I st started this course last year as the as the kid who knew everything. Um, I was the oldest student, but I started last year, and I very really very quickly realized that in actual fact I didn't know a terrible lot about refugees or integration and that I had been uh, very process driven in, in my work. Um, I loved the course, I have to say, I thought it was fantastic. I was working full time and I completed the course um, full time. Um, but to do that, I, I need to say I did take a month off in December from work uh, because December was quite heavy at the end of semester one and I took July and August off to uh, complete my dissertation. And I don't feel that I could have uh, completed my dissertation without being off in July and August. Um, there was there is far more choice available this year than, than what there was last year because we were on um, we were on Zoom, and that's something I'm quite jealous of. <laughs> the supplementary modules that I took, I, I did the politics of the UN and I did international development, and, and and I found them both really really good and really helpful. I work at both a strategic and an operational level in in my job. And the politics of the UN one sort of allowed me to uh, yeah, see where everything fitted in and see see where my what my role was as a very small wheel and a very, very big cog. But the forced migration um, module and the refugee journey model were, were also amazing. Challenged my fundamental uh, practice, but also challenged my beliefs on what integration was or what it wasn't. And there were some very, and, and you know, uh, like I will tell you about saying, um, the capability to do and to be what you value. Uh, I lecture people on that now daily. <laughs> um, and about opening up new space and meeting them in the middle. Uh, again, I lecture people on that daily. I, I, I'm heading up the Ukrainian resettlement in Northern Ireland uh, for health, along, along with all my colleagues from across all the other government departments. Uh, it's amazing in the mornings now. We do uh, meetings at half eight in the morning and, and people actually listen to me. Um, I, uh, as if I know what I'm talking about, and but it has instilled the confidence in me that I do, I do know what I'm talking about now. And when I hear people coming back to me from the Department of Finance talking about, you know, capability and capacity and those type of things, I I feel quite um, uh, quite happy about it. And in, in the middle of the course, I was able. We have a refugee integration strategy for Northern Ireland now, and I was able to significantly influence that strategy, and that was because of my my participation in the course. Um, it's not as good as one should be, but it's better than, than what it was. So delighted. I'm really happy to take any questions from anyone. Uh, the first thing I would say to you, if you do the course, is learn how to use Loop really quickly. It took me quite a while to try and master it. And also 
learn how to use the online library. I'm I'm not not uh, IT literate, um, but once I learned how to master them, the course actually became a lot easier. So, anybody, any questions for me? I'm more than happy to um, answer them. The the lectures were all good fun. They were all interactive. There were some that I found more challenging than others. Uh, Veronica is a very tight marker. Um, <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, great, great team all around. I enjoyed every minute of it. I have to say, Never, thank I didn't you so much. In the whole semester, so thanks a million, uh, Stephen. That's really helpful, and I'm delighted to hear. Uh, you know, this is our first time really to talk since um, yeah. I last saw you. Um, in, in class, as it were, online, and it's it's wonderful to hear the contributions that you're able to make, and um, how you value the, what you learned in the last year. That's really, it's it's for me as a lecturer. That's it's just gold to hear that now. It's wonderful. Yeah. That's great. I think I chose the right modules, and I think the, the the right modules allowed me to. I have a strategic role, which. I don't really enjoy it, but I also have an operational role, which I love. And I was able to marry the two within the course. And I think if you're going to work in refugee integration in Ireland, I think that you should be doing this type of course. If you want to work with refugees or displaced people, this is the type of course you need. You really need to do. And that's not me getting a hard sell, by the way, or me. To, you know, that's the truth. And the, the module is quite, or the program is a unique program. Um, when we designed it in DCU, we looked around to see what else was available and we saw that there was a gap. There are a lot of programs that look very broadly at migration studies, but when we look specifically at forced migration refugees, that um, was, uh, we saw that there was the gap there. Um, and we we also understand that th that gap is also at a wider level in Europe and beyond. So we have some students who come over from North America. We've had students from Finland, from, yeah, from different parts of Europe. Coming Portugal, and the Magda, Portugal, Portugal, Greece, yeah. Canada, yeah. Finland. And it was great. Actually, those perspectives were, were great. And meeting the students from the other the other courses and, and looking at their perspectives was also when I did the politics of the UN and the international development. They were both really, really good. Yeah, the um, the... This year, perhaps more than in previous years as well, we've had a number of students who are current, who've just come out of direct provision system uh, and, you know, who had been quite traumatized by the Irish system and went reading up reports, uh, were talking about being re-triggered by it. So we we had good assistance from Spirassi. They came and they did they did a session with us on self-care uh, in dealing with that in that area. Um, oh, yeah, so there's a question from Jessica. You're asking, um, it, it mentioned part-time fees. Yes, so in fact, this current this coming year we're offering it full time only not part time the reason being is that we found the uptake for the part time route was so negligible maybe one one student in fact has taken it in this past year and that can create logistical issues for us if the program were to change in subsequent years so we've opted for this coming year to uh, make it full time only and so the timetable, what is it like? As I mentioned, it's by and large, um, we try and timetable everything after 4 p.m. So Stephen was an example of somebody who was working full time um, and did have to take a bit of time off when it came to looking at the assignment work in December and in the summer. Um, some of the modules in law and government, as I said, can be time changed <laughs> earlier in the day before 4 p.m. But you can, with um, advice from us, if if the 4 p.m. is really important for you, that you're if you're not available before that, we can guide you towards the modules. Basically, modules from our school of um, School of Applied Language Intercultural Studies will be timetabled after four. Lectures are not every day. Um, maybe three three times a week would be the average sometimes four depending on the module choice that you have 
my, my, my module is Tuesday and Wednesday every evening. We're with you with the, the Mari team. And then I had to do the international development was a Thursday day, but I was able to work that out with lunch break. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then the uh, UN module was on a Friday night. Um, again, I, I was able to manage that okay. Mm. So I don't know if there are any other questions. It's hard to know. We don't know how many people are <laughs> tuning in. So, um, so you're very welcome to ask. Okay, you're welcome, Jessica. I'm going to share my screen again because I just have some contact points. If you I don't have any questions now, but you might have later. Um, let me just go to share my screen. Wait till I see now. Chrome tab, yeah. So that was thanks again to Stephen. Um, these are the questions and contact details. So if it's on the web, but just to give it again, my name, Veronica Crosby. I'm the chairperson of the program. So you can reach me at veronica.crosby. And remember, it's Crosby with IE, not Crosby as in Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young um, at dcu.ie. Um, this is where you can find us on the DCU website. If you Google Mary on DCU um, under postgrad courses in Salas, which is our School of Applied Language Intercultural Studies, the MA Refugee Integration. And then there is a link there to the student applicant portal as well. Um, so if you do think this is the course for you you can um you register with the portal and you start they'll you know there's a step-by-step -step guide where they will ask for information um you may have to you're not you may you will have to submit your any certification you know to verify that you have uh, studied before and what your credentials are and so on okay i'm going to stop sharing that again